Hi, this is Nicholas, and I have an update and demonstration of the MU MicroPython editor for the BBC's MicroBit device. So, why write a new editor when we already have Touch Develop? Well, Touch Develop is great, but it doesn't have all the features that we want for a simple Python code editor. Furthermore, you need to be connected to the internet to use it. And sometimes this isn't possible because the network is broken or has slowed down to a crawl. So, Mu is a native application that will run on Windows, Mac, Linux and Raspberry Pi. It's a single file so you don't need to install anything. You simply drag the file onto your desktop and double click it. Unfortunately, on Windows you'll need to install a special driver from ARM to use the editor's REPL feature, which we'll see in a moment. But you only have to do this once. Uh, from then on, everything should just work. It's important to note that Mu is also only a few hundred lines of Python, so it's entirely possible to write the code for Mu using the Mu editor itself, which is rather a mind-bending thought. It has a very, very simple interface that includes the basic file system operations of creating a new file, loading an existing one, and that'll also extract Python code from a hex file too, and saving a .py Python source file. The next set of buttons are very interesting. Flash will detect a plugged in micro bit and flash your code from the editor onto the device. So there's no need to fanny any around with dragging and dropping things. It also takes a matter of seconds for the device to be flashed. In this way, MicroPython development for the micro bit is very smooth and fast. Uh, so let me show you a simple example. I would like to scroll the classic greeting that all programmers use when demonstrating their code. I click flash, I get a little informative pop-up box, and then you should see the device flashing and the result of my code running on the display there on the device. The next button, the REPL button, connects you to MicroPython running directly on the connected device. Um, it's a lot of fun to try things out in the REPL before including the final code into your script in the editor window. So it's a place for you to play around and experiment. So for example, let's get the device to show a simple picture. So display dot show, and I'll use one of the built-in ones the happy face because we're happy that this editor works. So there's the little smiley emoji thing. <laughs> um, so like I said, lots of experimentation can happen in the REPL window um, and then you can uh, work out what the code is that you want to create and copy that over into the actual editor where your script, your final script is being created. So the zoom in and zoom out buttons are for visually impaired users and also for teachers who need to project code so that the whole class can see what they're doing, even those sat at the back of the classroom. We're also going to add a night and day toggle button that'll switch you between the current light editor theme and a dark look that displays better via a projector. The dark mode is also designed to be very high contrast to help those who may have a visual impairment. It's important to note that we want this editor to be, to be accessible to all. So we've implemented a number of hotkeys to ensure all the actions associated with the editor are available to those who may only use a keyboard. Finally, there is the quit button that'll save your current state so everything is ready for you when you start back up again. That's it really, uh, more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks a lot.